Hey guys, I'm Sun. I'm a privacy and a security researcher and you're watching Behind the Scenes. Uh, it's been quite a while. I haven't posted a video in like almost a month and um, yeah, I've been super busy. I've been actually busy working on this project on the privacy guides and I wanted to share what I've been up to. Uh, now, before I go ahead and do that, for those of you who are new to the channels, uh, to the channel Behind the Scenes is where I give you guys some context on the process of creating the privacy guides. It's a place for me to talk to you guys about, uh, you know, everything that goes on behind the scenes. So if you're not into that, you can skip this episode. All behind the scene episodes are clearly labeled with a little pink outline. Um, okay, so yeah, no videos in over a month. Holy moly. Uh, that VPN uh, guide that I promised about a month ago has been keeping me awake at night. I put in so much time, actually a ridiculous amount of time into that episode and it is ready. All of the research is done. Uh, I am so, so, so excited to share that with you guys. But in order to get to that piece of content, there was so much fundamental stuff that I needed to address for me to feel comfortable sharing that with you. Um, first things first, where are we going to self-host that VPN? Which hosting providers are good? I mean, obviously we're not gonna host that on Amazon AWS if we care about privacy, so that by itself entailed a huge amount of research. And then I found uh, a few providers, two of which I'm gonna be discussing, probably not today, but in uh, the next episode. Those two providers are so incredibly different from a benchmarking perspective. One of them is amazing for network performance, but is shitty for disk IO performance. And the other is amazing for CPU memory and disk IO, but is not so great for networking. And to make things even more complicated, most providers that I found did not support IPv6. And as I discussed in the episode on IPv6, uh, it's quite problematic from a privacy perspective and VPNs that do not run on dual stack infrastructure, uh, meaning that the VPN server is dual stacked, that can you know lead to leakage, uh, IPv6 leaks on devices. Not all devices are victim to that. I actually uh, suggested ways to disable IPv6 on macOS and on iOS, but that only works on iOS for um, cellular data, sorry. So, okay, huge amounts of research. I mean, hundreds of hours of research have, uh, you know, been done since I last talked to you guys here. So I'm very, very happy to uh, share this with you shortly. Now, before moving along, um, I've been up to a few other things. Uh, first things first, um, yeah. So I, actually, before I go ahead and, and discuss this, um, I was really hoping that peer review was going to be easier. I thought that I would be able to reach out to a few people that I find inspiring on server fault or other, uh, you know, boards. And I did get positive feedback, but most people did not engage in thorough peer review the way I wished uh, they would. That means that I had to do all of the heavy lifting to make sure that what I'm about to publish is good. And in order to facilitate all of that peer review process, I uh, changed a few things on the CMS that I wanna share with you guys. So uh, let's jump ahead here. Uh, so one of the things that I changed is uh, console code blocks. So when I go about writing those guides, uh, you know, usually you have those commands that you essentially copy paste in a console uh, and you just run them and that's great, but what if the, it's an interactive command. You know, what if that command asks you guys for, you know, different tweaks? Uh, and that's exactly what happened here in the, t uh, in the case of using GNUPG to create a private and public key, uh, you know, and all of this stuff here used to be black or not present at all. And I wanted you guys to feel comfortable when you run those commands. I wanted you guys to see what the output looks like, especially when we have an interactive thing going on. So this is what's happening here. So you can actually see all of the things that I'm entering when that command is running. And you can see this, you could see it probably on the video, but now you can actually see it in the reference material. So that's a big leap forward. 
Uh, now, another thing that I changed is in page anchors. So some of the guides can be long. The one on Strong Swan is very long. Uh, now, I did put in an, em an enormous amount of work for it to be uh, kind of seamless. It's easy to flow through it. I think that I can do it in about five minutes, maybe 10. Um, but there are over 30 steps if my memory is correct. So if you guys have a problem with one of those steps and you need some help, it's hard to say, well, okay, it's step 33. And then the person has to kind of like go into in, in the guide and scroll all the way down, find where, you know, 33 is. So I made it much easier. Now, when you mouse over any heading, okay, you can see a little thing's going to appear here, a little link. And so let's say we have a problem with step two. If we click here, it will bring focus to step number two and the whole URL here has changed. Not sure why this stuff is showing up here. I have to fix that. Um, so yeah, so the step actually appears here and you can share those links with me or others to, uh, you know, bring someone directly into a specific step. So that's super exciting. Um, now, one last thing I did here is in stories such as the sorry, stories, that's that's what's cool in guides such as the IPv6 one. I was uploading pictures. Now, when I was shooting those pictures on my computer, uh, you know, using screenshots, essentially, sometimes the screenshot had a lot of white and it was on a white background and it made it kind of hard to figure out what the window was, what, you know, the background here on the website is. So I actually found a really nice way of having little drop shadows that make it really beautiful and contextualized. And if you click on it, as usual, the picture grows. So yeah, I'm super excited about those changes. I think those changes are gonna make things beautiful and much more effortless for people to peer review. Now to that effect, I don't wanna publish material that is not uh, robust, that is not well researched. Sometimes I need help and all of this, by the way, is available on GitHub, as you guys know by now, I guess. But GitHub doesn't format things in a nice way and I wanted people to be able to peer review more polished, uh, you know, content such as what you're seeing here. So to that effect, um, I created something called Draft. So in the GitHub repository, there is a new branch for the privacy guides called Draft. And I published another version of the website called draft.sunnewton.com. And that version is synchronized on the draft branch. That means that I can publish stuff here. And as you can see, it says content in review and this really, you know, vibrant color. So people will know that this is being peer reviewed. It's not meant for publication. It's not meant to be uh, to, to run this in production, but it's a great way for me to be able to share, you know, a guide such as the strong, strong guide that I'm about to publish here on YouTube. But yeah, so this is super exciting. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, another change. Um, I was, you know, writing the, these guides and publishing them to GitHub. And uh, now that we're starting to, you know, get a little deeper uh, into subject matters such as self-hosting VPNs, that's something that may be sensitive. I wanted you guys to be able to know that I wrote that stuff you know, that I wrote a specific commit to the Git repository so that you guys know that someone is not, uh, you know, attempting some kind of a man in the middle attack on this content. Now, this is it's a little early to talk about stuff like this, but as more and more of you start following those guides, I wouldn't want someone to be able to temper with them. Um, so to that effect, uh, on the privacy guides repository, all of the recent commits are now signed using my PGP public and private key, meaning you guys can know that I actually wrote that uh, content. I submitted that commit uh, to the repository. Okay, um, now let me see what else I have for you guys today. Yes, um, yeah, so we're, we're almost, uh, I'm almost about to wrap up this behind the scenes episode, I wanted to also mention that we're almost 2000 and that is so exciting. So the channel has grown significantly. A lot of you guys are writing, uh, you know, comments and stuff like this on YouTube. I guess some of you are sharing this content outside of YouTube. I did uh, see a few things on my radar. I know some of you 
tag me on Reddit. So that's super exciting. The more people care about privacy, the better in my opinion. So I am so very happy that we're developing this project together. Um, yeah, so we're gonna be celebrating 2,000 subscribers soon. Uh, and I'll you know probably create a video for that. But before we get there, um, probably tomorrow, I'm gonna be publishing an episode on how to benchmark servers uh, to know, as I mentioned earlier, if they're good for networking, if they're good for you know database uses, stuff like this. I know these episodes are a little, uh, a little nerdier. Uh, so for those of you who are not into running your own servers and stuff like this, be patient. I have some great content coming. I want to create content on how to do backups, and backups is a great, uh, it's a great subject. And doing incremental backups, encrypting them, making sure that you don't lose access to those files that you love. That's something that we'll be discussing and I have a whole bunch of other subjects. I am so excited that I'm now out of the rabbit hole on all of this Strong Swan stuff. So yeah, a lot coming. Uh, so yeah, next up is gonna be an episode on how to benchmark servers. And after that, an episode on um, Strong Swan, how to self-host our own Strong Swan servers. The reason why I was hesitating here is I might have another episode somewhere in between those to discuss how can we find you know a privacy conscious hosting provider and what should we be looking for i think that might be interesting uh to you guys yes super excited i'll see you soon bye bye